Hello, AP Stats. Uh, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Um, I know I am. It's beautiful outside. I don't know when you're going to watch this, but maybe it's beautiful outside for you too. Okay, so we are doing the last section of 7.3, actually the last section of Chapter 7 in general, um, and this is called the Essential Limit Theorem. And basically this is kind of an, in addition to um, what we talked about last class, which was um, the sampling distribution of X bar. And so this kind of expands on that a little bit. So here we go. Uh, all right, so our SWBAT for today is um, students will be able to explain how the shape of the distribution uh, of X bar is related to the shape of the population distribution. And then we're also going to use the central limit theorem to help find probabilities involving a sample mean x bar. So I know we already looked at this applet in class, but um, I want to show you a few more examples with it because it's really awesome. And I think it really helps explain the central limit theorem. So last class, we only talked about how we could do normal calculations if the parent population was normal as well. Um, and so I kind of want to show you an example of something um, so remember this, the top distribution is the parent population. Um, I'm going to make the parent population look not normal. Okay. So let's make it look really funky. I'm going to create my own. Yee! And it looks really crazy, funky, weird. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's take um, a small sample. Let's two. We'll take a sample of size two. Um, so that means here's my population distribution. Okay, so I'm going to randomly select two, so two things from my population and then find the mean of them. And then on this third graph here, you'll see um, the mean of those two. So let's look at the first example. So that's the, this blue one's the mean of these two points, okay, because that's my sample. So then I do this again, and I get another mean, then I do this again, I get another mean, do this again, get another mean. Okay, so we do this a million times, right? So let's do this non-animated five times. Okay, let's do it again, and again, and again, and again. Okay, maybe I'll do it 10,000 times. Huh, interesting, that does not look normal. Okay, and we keep going, we keep going. All right, so eventually it kind of settles into some sort of weird shape, which is not normal. Therefore, we cannot do normal calculations with it. So let's try the same parent population, but with a larger sample. So let's do a sample of size 10, maybe. Let's um, animate the first one so you guys can see. Okay, so we pick 10 different things, and we get the mean of those 10 observations. Okay, then we do that again. Another 10, do, 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 do. find the mean of those observations. Okay, we do this five times, we do it another five times, and another five times, and we keep going. Maybe we do it 10,000 times. Oh, <gasps> Ooh, that was exciting. Okay, look at that. Interesting. <clears throat> Looks a little more normal than the previous one did. Okay, um, so if you fit the normal curve to it, Right? It's looking pretty nice, actually. Um, let's say, for example, we did a sample of size 25, a much larger sample. I'm not going to fit the normal at the beginning. So I'm going to do one animation. Right, So here's 25 observations. Um, say we're taking a simple random sample of people's heights or something. This is 25 people's heights. And then we find the mean of that. Okay, And then we do that five times and get the distribution. Another five times. Oh, let's do this 10,000 times. Ah. Okay. So then all of a sudden you see this shape and um, this is our sampling distribution of the means <clears throat> or close to it. And there's my normal, uh, my normal curve on top of it. So <clears throat> you can kind of see this. You can actually go to the website and try your own um, distribution. I can make my a uh, new distribution if I wanted to and make it look really funky. Um, but you'll kind of see the same sorts of observations. You'll see that with a smaller sample size, 
um, your sampling distribution of the means is going to be not so normal. Um, but the larger your sample size gets, the better the observations become and the more normal your sampling distribution becomes. So that's kind of what the central limit theorem tells us, is it basically says, hey, guess what? When I have a large enough sample size, no matter what my parent population looks like, namely, like even if it looks really funky like this, um, my sampling distribution will be approximately normal. And then we can do normal calculations with it, and we're really happy. Yay! Super exciting. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, and we'll actually write this down, but you kind of saw what that means. So basically, the central limit theorem says that when the sample size n of any population is large enough, okay, and I know this sounds really bizarre, but there's a lot of proof behind it, but it's kind of uh, beyond the scope of AP stats. So we're just going to accept it as truth for now. I hate that. But anyways, um, basically, large enough is larger than 30. Why 30? Again, beyond the scope of this course. It's not, I don't love it, but, you know, that's what they accept for AP. So here we go. Then the um, sampling distribution of the means, X bar, is approximately normal. Okay, and we also talked about yesterday, if the parent population already is normal, approximately normal, then it actually doesn't matter what size your sample is. So, um, your, so then your sampling distribution will already be approximately normal. I bet, you guys ready to do an example? Cool, super pumped that you're in too. <laughs> okay. So, suppose the average number of dates a high school student goes on before deciding to be in a relationship, to have an official title, uh, is right skewed with a mean of four and standard deviation of two dates. Assuming that a student at Dawson, oh, sorry, assuming that the students at Dawson are typical daters, uh, I don't know if that's true. Um, how likely is it that a random sample of 40 students from Dawson will have to go on 10 or more dates on average to make it to Facebook status? Okay, that's, I think our probability is going to be pretty, pretty tiny, but that's okay. <clears throat> so here's the deal, right? We're starting out with the parent population, so the entire world of teenagers dating, okay? Every teenager in the world, okay? Um, and it's starts out as right skewed. Okay, so this is my parent population, right? My parent population looks something like that, and it has a mean, which will probably be about here, of four, and a standard deviation of two. But we're not looking at the entire population. What we're looking at is a random sample of teenagers, specifically from Dawson, but we're just going to assume that Dawson is a nice little bubble of normal teenagers. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, <laughs> so this is our parent population, and we want to uh, look at our sampling distribution. And in order to do that, right, we need to check our conditions. One, can we use all of those formulas to find the mean of the sampling distribution, standard deviation of the standard uh, of the sampling distribution. Um, and then we also need to know if this sampling distribution is approximately normal. So we have to check our conditions first. So here goes. All right, so these are our two con conditions that we have to check. One is n, uh, is our sample size less than or equal to 10% of the population? And our population, if our population is all teenagers, all high school students, um, and our sample size is, is 40, right, we can definitely say that 40 is less than or equal to 10% of the population because there are a lot of high schoolers in the world. And then the second condition 
um, is n or my sample size greater than or equal to 30? Yes, it is. It's equal to 40. And 40 is greater than 30. So we can carry on and we can do some normal calculations, which is super exciting. Okay, so here's kind of my, my sampling distribution. Remember that the parent population is skewed, but the sampling distribution, which is the distribution of the means, right? So like all of this, this entire thing is a bunch of means. X bar, X bar, X bar, right? All a bunch of means, okay? So remember that the mean, because we've checked our conditions, our mean is equal to the mean of the population, which was four. And our standard deviation is equal to the standard deviation of the population over the square root of um, the sample size. So in this case, sigma was 2, and our sample size was 40. So using my handy-dandy calculator, I'm going to calculate my standard deviation, which is 2 over root 40. Okay, so I'm going to do that. 2 over root 40. Okay, and I get 0.3162. Okay, so that's my standard deviation. So then using the normal CDF, because it's a normal curve, approximately normal, um, we can calculate the probability that um, the mean of this sample will be greater than 10. All right, so I go in, second bars, get my normal CDF. Uh, my lower bound, I want is 10, my upper bound is infinity, um, my mean is 4, and my standard deviation I calculated to be 0.3162. This probability is going to be really tiny. And then we figure out what that probability is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so e to the negative 80, that means 10 to the negative 80. So essentially 0%. Cool! All right, so that is how we would use the central limit theorem. <clears throat> okay, so we have the same question, um, but for a simple random of a simple random sample of fifteen. So unfortunately, once we get to the plan step of this, we check our conditions. It's fifteen less than ten percent of the population. One, yes, that works. Same condition as above, but number two, n is not greater than thirty. No. Therefore, we cannot do anything. Sad day. At least at this point. Okay, so here's the catch. Right On the AP, when you're actually taking the test, if you find that one of your conditions isn't met, you cannot just say no and then don't answer the rest of the question. You won't get any points. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to say, no, it doesn't meet this uh, condition, but I'm going to proceed and calculate anyways, um, but, you know, just kind of be aware that my results probably won't be very accurate. Okay, so that's kind of what you want to think about um, in terms of the AP and answering that. So, next example, all about Justin Bieber. Got to have a little dance party first. Okay, we don't really have a lot of time, but we're going to listen to it anyways. Um, so I'll do most of the work uh, on here, and then, you know, you can ask me questions. But, you know. I got money in my hands that I really like to play. Okay. I'm having way too much fun with this. Sorry, I just have to get to the chorus. The chorus is the best part. Hey! <laughs> Alright, there is the solution to question one. Hopefully you got a chance to work it out yourself. And then I'm going to answer question two as well. And there's the solution for two. So please read these solutions because I really spent a lot of time like writing them out so that hopefully this makes sense to you, the difference between the sampling distribution and the population distribution. See ya in class! Mwah!